Okay, let's briefly discuss deciphering log files. And what I want to get into for this video is syslog messages. Syslog is a protocol that's used by lots of different network devices that can output all the log messages to a server. Uh, so you can output all that information right to your workstation. An example of this software that can be used to pull this information from say a router or a firewall is the SolarWinds Kiwi Syslog server. Good software, I recommend you check it out. There's a free trial. Now this software has a cost involved with it. So I actually use the free version, but they all work pretty much the same. And uh, if you're in the field, you'll definitely see SolarWinds. I've uh, been using their applications for years. So Syslog server is going to be the software that runs on your workstation that pulls the log files from your router or your firewall or what have you. And most devices today are compatible with Syslog. It just has to be enabled in order to output that information. So let's show an example of that. I'm going to connect to one of my test routers on my network here, and that's on 10.254.254.1. And it's a D-Link router. It's a, you know, all-in-one device, a multifunction network device. It's got the firewall and all that. So we're going to log into that guy now. All right, we're logged in, and we'll go to the logs option here, and we'll see the recent log entries. Uh, you can see at the top here, allowed configuration authentication by dot 130. Well, 130 is the workstation that I'm working at here, the one that's running this browser, the, my local machine. I just logged in, I just got authenticated. And if you look down the list here, you'll see all kinds of good information. For example, uh, blocked incoming UDP packet, blocked incoming UDP packet, blocked incoming TCP connection request, it happens all the time. I don't really care what uh, you're running. You're most likely going to get hit by all kinds of uh, people that are trying to access your network or robots that are just scanning your network. For example, somebody from 177.85.176.165 was using port 53 to try to connect to the router. Well, it got blocked because the firewall is doing its job. And yeah, you may have guessed this is for this particular test network. This is uh, my static IP out to the internet, which I will modify after all these videos have been recorded, of course. But the key is it's blocking it. And the firewall has logged that this has happened. So if you get hit by somebody a lot at the same IP address, you could blacklist them or report them or do whatever you want to do about it. The key here, though, is that it, it might be a bit of a hassle to use your browser to connect to the router uh, and to access the log files in this manner. So, especially if you have a lot of devices. So the great thing about syslog is it can output all these log files to your syslog server software, which runs right at your workstation. And from that syslog server, you can access lots of different devices, uh, and lots of people can access your syslog server as well. So makes it a lot easier. And plus it, it shows all the information in a real nice uh, view and you can do a lot of searching and filtering and it's, it's a very good program to use. So what I wanna do is I wanna set up syslog to export this log file. So we'll do that from the tools section, go to syslog and we'll do enable logging to a syslog server. And I've already set that server up. I've already installed the software and it's dot .130, that's the local machine that I'm working at here. We'll save the settings, and that'll start sending out the information to that syslog server. So we're done with the router. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to log into that router to see the logs anymore because they're going to automatically populate in the syslog software, which I'm going to bring up now. Now, I've already downloaded this software. I'm using syslog watcher, which I like. It's a free program for now. Uh, I downloaded it, installed it, and configured it to pull information from the D-Link router, 10.254.254.1. Very easy to do. Once you do that, you can choose how the software will work. Now, the way I set it up is as a local syslog server. 
So it's storing all the syslog information from this D-Link router, but you could also have this information stored on another computer, on a remote computer, and possibly, you know, it, maybe that's your archival computer. Maybe it's a better type of computer that lots of admins can connect to. You might not want the other admins connecting to your system. Uh, or perhaps the IT director has it running on a special computer and all the other admins want to connect to that remote computer. And so you get a lot of options here. Uh, but I'm just running it locally. So I'm going to choose manage local syslog server. We'll bring that guy up. And we've already configured, like I said, we've already configured the router. It's 10.254.254.1. But you want to check a couple things uh, within the configuration when you first set it up and within your settings. Before I show that, what I want to do is I want to start this server and start it populating information from the router because that's going to take some time for actual logs to appear uh, as they happen. So we'll start the server now. And it says down here, service started. So that's good. And that's gonna take a little bit to populate. So for now, we'll go to the settings and we'll take a look at the network interfaces. By default, when you use a syslog server, the syslog server software now, this is what's running on your local workstation here, it's gonna receive the syslogs, the syslog messages from your router or your firewall or whatever device on port 514, and you can see some messages are coming in now, but it's the default port 514 and it uses a UDP transport mechanism, which is connectionless, which is fine for my purposes, but in a very, in a high security situation, uh, connectionless might not be any good because you might actually lose some packets in those non-guaranteed uh, sessions. So you might want to use TCP. You might, might ha you might want to have guaranteed uh, connectivity. And to do that, this program uses port 1468. That might vary from one program to the next. Also, uh, some of the proprietary programs use their own port. They might not use port 514 by default. So that's going to depend on the program. So always check that in the settings. But the default syslog port is 514 uh, connectionless UDP transport mechanism. So you always want to check your uh, settings, make sure it's working properly and configured properly. We know this is configured properly. It's grabbing information from dot one and uh, it's going to keep on grabbing the information as the logs come in, which is basically, uh, it's broken down into two things. Who logged into the router and what they do and who's trying to connect to the router from the outside, from the internet. For example, the first one that came in here is a uh, blocked request and it shows you here blocked incoming tcp connection request from blah 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 and the information also shows up on the bottom here and you can see exactly what happened blocked incoming tcp connection request from 222.185.198.158 on port 58106 to my address 64.121.172.56 on port 23 well, they're basically trying to tell net into the system. You know, they're using port 23. That's going to be blocked by this firewall. That's a basic thing that, uh, you know, most firewalls are going to block. So it did its job, but it's good to know what happened and when and who was trying to do it. Uh, you want to be able to read these types of logs. You want to understand exactly what's happening with these types of logs. Definitely make sure that you can run a syslog server pull information from your router, your Soho device, your firewall, multiple devices if you want, because you can have you know multiple sources if you want. And make sure that you can decipher these messages, understand what these messages are, what they mean. Um, it's important to understand you know the source IP address, the source port, and your IP address and the port that they were trying to connect to and understand what these possible attacks could be. For example, trying to connect through Telnet or trying to use a DNS server to connect to you uh, or possibly trying to connect through some type of Android port or something like that. Just trying to find an opening on your network. One vulnerability is all it takes. 
So, and it's amazing because, you know, if you look at any basic firewall or, you know, Soho router that's out there, it's going to get hit every minute, two minutes, every five minutes by some type of device out on the internet, you know, constantly just pounding away at all the computers it possibly can. So it's amazing to look at, but it's something that you want to keep in mind here. And then of course you can import and export this information. You can filter this information the way you want to find what you want. Cause there's going to be a lot of logs as time goes on. And, uh, again, like I said, it's a, it's really, uh, easy. It's very manageable. It's very easy to work with. It's a lot easier than logging into all your different routers and firewalls and connecting into the firmware with your browser and checking the log files individually. You can check them all from this one uh, syslog server screen.